Right, so make sure your free motion settings are all engaged. I like to, my machine has it so that you can leave the needle down when you take your foot off, so I find that easy and then things don't go astray so much. So if you have that setting, you can get that engaged. Right, I'll try and do this without getting my fingers in the way so much. So I've got a couple of flowers here that we're going to do. So we're just going to stitch around them in the dark brown cotton. Right, I have my picture to one side, so I find that's easiest. So stitch around, stitch around the edge, and then find your scissors. Should be there. We go, and just get that first end snip down off, and then you don't have to keep sewing over it every two seconds. Okay. So I just stitch close to the edge. Make sure I catch everything down. So I'm just pausing to make sure my fingers aren't in the way. Okay, now you can see here, find the scissors. I missed that edge here, so I didn't actually sew it down at all. I'd sewed a very neat line just next to it, but we're not going to worry about it. I'm just going to make sure I definitely get it next time. It is the problem of trying to stitch very close to the edge. You're not always going to get it. So here, I'm playing to the I'm making sure I definitely get it. So I'll go back down to here. Right, so on my pattern, I will be doing this, stitching to the next one with green thread for the plant. But So we're just going to hop over to the next flower. So these are a bit fiddly, really. So there's two ones here, and I've left them stuck together because the fewer raw edges we can leave, the better. Because otherwise it's just extra to sew down and more to fray. Now, on bits like this, You've got seams for the patchwork underneath, so it does something sometimes kind of bump you a little bit, so you don't go quite the way you meant to go. So just try not to worry about it. Where there's a petal here, I'm sewing it in as I go, so that I don't have to go back again. And these these flowers are very small. It really doesn't matter too much what they look like here. I'm not I'm not gonna worry whether they're all exactly how they should be. So that's all those down twice, so I'll move on to the next one. Okay, so I'm just stitching around the leaves at the bottom now, so I've got the flowers outlined. And on these I've cut all of the this this leaf here, so for this flower in this lighter green. I've cut all of it out in one. I don't know where your monkey is, James. It's a lamb, anyway. Um, what was I say? They've got they've got these lamb teddies for Easter, and James is sure his is a monkey, but it isn't. It's a lamb. And I unfortunately got them all four the same, so there's been a bit of arguing about it. Anyway, right. So yes, I cut all of this bits out as one piece and then what I've done is I then had a second go and I cut out just this one leaf here so there's like a for the tall flower there's one kind of one two pair a pair of leaves which is in front so what I've done is I've cut it out again out of exactly the same fabric so there is a slight difference in in color you can see where it is and it also gives you a nice outline to be able to stitch so you haven't got to work out so much of where those leaves are and then you haven't got to try and find another fabric which is like the same colour but just slightly different because these are hand dyed fabrics, they are slightly different if you just cut them out in a different place so something to consider. Okay, so I'm just stitching around these leaves on the outlining and I'm just putting very gentle scallops in as I go. Okay. Now, on here, I've got, this is quite a big panel, and you can, I don't know if I can get it in the shot. Can you see? I'm just waving this. So on that side there is the rest of the panel, which I've rolled up and pinned. So at this point now, it's actually hitting the inside of the machine. So just keep on rolling that up without trying, trying to make sure that you keep the bit you're working on flat. But you can just fold it. I've just got it in now. So now it won't hit the inside of the machine. Now here, I'm going to be sewing over this darker green leaf 
so which is fine but I just make sure that it is exactly where you want it to be because once you've caught it down actually you know with the little bit here then that's going to be where it stays okay. Yeah, so something to watch out here with this this darker green leaf is that I've, I'm doing the right hand side of the panel so we do need to make sure that you keep a quarter of an inch seam allowance free otherwise when we sew the panel together you'll chop off the edge of your leaf so make sure you've got enough space there I seem to have gone quite close so you might want to give a little bit more margin than I have because it doesn't matter if your flowers overlap in the main quilt because flowers do they, they don't all sit there neat and tidy we just don't want to lob them off later on on some of these bits here you're going to have to make up a little bit of where you're going to divide for different leaves i wouldn't worry too much about whether yours is exactly the same as mine all of them are equally valid So that's my leaves sewn down. So next, I'm going to go on to the violet flowers. So I'm just going to roll this up a little bit more. It is the problem of not having a big long arm machine. Mine, the throat area on my machine is an absolute standard little one. Would like to save up at some point, get myself a long arm machine. Are they where I would put it? I don't know. But, uh, I've just cut that thread out and folded it all so that we've just got this little bit to go at the edge. So arrange your flowers and go wherever you want. There we go. And we're just going to stitch around these and then we can start changing our thread colour. Something you should watch out when you're doing stuff where you've got quite a thick layers and things like this, just keep on making sure that you're free motion foot or darning foot is still attached because I find sometimes um, if you get something on one side or a bit of a uneven surface it works it loose or knocks it off which is you can I don't know if you can see on here but my my free motion foot is very scratched from where I've it knocks off and then I hit it with a needle which tends to break the needle and scratch the foot and at some point I should really buy myself a spare one because I'm sure one day it's going to go and snap could do this little bud with um, just thread instead if you wanted rather than stitch it but I seem to have cut it out so we'll just do all this and we can put in that kind of petal swirl there as well okay so I'll carry those and then we'll change okay so I'm going to start changing threads so this is the one I'm going to use the, for the violets which is it's quite a blue blue colour it's um, one of the Wonder Fill Conf the Tootie ones. So, I've forgotten which one it is. Tootie 20, it says. So, it's like blues and purples. So, we're just going to make our flowers look pretty with a little bit of this on the outside. I think I've used this on the blue bells. I've got a big box next to me of the colours that I've used so far on this wall hanging so I'm trying to limit myself now to not just go and pick a completely different thread up because I've got so many threads and I'll have to write them all up so let's try and restrict them a little bit so first off we'll just stitch around the outside of this flower this violet which is facing us now these cottons are a little bit thicker than the 40 weight that I was using for outlining so I find just just knocking down the tension just a little bit so I've gone from four to three and a half and I find that's usually enough so I'm not doing anything too fancy here we're just going around the edge putting a couple of wiggles in and this has the advantage there's anywhere that you missed before and hopefully this will make it extra secure and I'm going to draw a little circle. So I've gone all the way around the edge and then again a little bit closer. 
and then a little circle in the centre. Now this violet is facing over to the left, so I don't think we need as much shading. So I'm just going to go a little bit. Oh, actually, I'll go around the whole thing. And then a little bit on the bud. there because I've scratched this foot so many times occasionally the thread gets caught on the foot which is what I was just doing there so it was just stuck on there which doesn't really help okay so that's that bit done trim those all neat okay so I threaded up this time with oh, I forgot what I threaded it up with um, it was a designer plane so it's DS853 so I would have used a variegated one but I couldn't find one in the colour I liked so I wanted it quite a cool green and a lot of my variegated greens are either muddy or more of a yellowy green so we just slowly stitch back and forth don't do it too fast so give it a nice little curve and we'll go on to the bud here again, just curve it round. Do you know I was gonna switch this off then and not show and, and delete that a little bit, but you can just see. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share my failure here. So that was my needle snap in there. So So I was just stitching over that seam and it must be a little bit thick there and I've snapped my needle. See there's a little, little snap needle. So it happens. You just have to go and get yourself another one. Put that one in the way. Yeah, I think it just it was just going over that seam and just snapped it there. So I'm just Okay, so here we go again. It turned out it wasn't thread, it was that my um, the top thread around the it got wrapped around. So it just got really tight and snapped that way. So make sure make sure everything's okay. Right. Okay, let's have another go. this one okay so now I need to go around these leaves I don't think I want to do anything too bright so I think I'm just going to keep the, the cotton I've got on the thread. so we're just going to stitch around and they have kind of scallopy Stitches. So we're just going to go around each leaf. No, and it's quite a matching colour for the for the fabric. This one, so it's going to give them a subtle effect to some texture around the leaves without really standing out. Some of the colours I've done on this foot are quite bright, so it's nice to have a bit. It isn't as bright. I'm not particularly following the pattern here. I'm just, I'm just making it. Okay, and that's those. I think that's probably finished. Those violets. Let's have a look. Do they need anything else? Finish off all the neat ends. I don't worry about the back, but try and make the front look neat. Just do one last little bit and change over to a lighter colour. Okay, so this one is 2T TU19 by Wonderful. So it's, I think it's called like lavender or mountain, but it's a, a cool, very light purple. I just want to put a tiny bit in, and it's going to look almost white against the colour of the flowers, but I just want just something on the 
of the bud and in the center of the forward facing flower. Yeah. I think he's just called Lamb. <laughs> it doesn't say. You can name him what you want. Lammy. Angel. Angel the Lamb. Well, that's a very sweet name. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to go in the centre and just do a little circle. Okay. Well, is it tricky doing circles? Well, this one is very small, so it's okay. Just cut away from that edge there. And then a little bit at the bottom of this wood. Angel wants to go in these. In these. He's calling me anything. This is now Angel the Lamb wants to go in Susie the Cat's bed. Oh, Susie. <laughs> okay, so I think that's probably them finished. <laughs> Jeez, hang